I was told so many stories And I kept them in my stomach Lies the truth Fake smiles of blood money I lost cause at a loss for words Trying to keep my tone down What I'm saying's absurd Unusual The context unique Buried in the depths right, of the form Okay, speech. welcome back Now, last Simple Skills video I did a little how-to on oil burning a bolt so that it doesn't rust and it absolutely fired you up you loved it so many of you contacted us one guy in particular said he's got a Land Rover it's got loads of bolts around the roof bars and stuff off-road vehicle and they all go rusty and like so many of you said you've got loads of bolts you want to do it to so you can take your bolts out chuck them all in an old roasting tin chuck in some sun oil and just set fire to the lot until it all burns off and you've done all of them at once including the thread. So there were loads of questions and I hope we managed to answer all your questions on oil burning. But one of them in particular was does this ruin the temper? Does it spoil or upset the strength of the metal when you heat it and quench it in the oil? No it doesn't because at that video where we did it with the heat, if you remember we just heated through the colour stage. So it went blue and purple and green and then it goes back to grey and that's it. Then you oil quench it. Well you're not quenching it in fact, you're just oil burning it and that doesn't ruin anything. It doesn't change the molecular structure of the oil. What does though is when you heat it up to about a thousand degrees, then quench it. That changes an awful lot about piece of metal. So welcome back, let's show you what happens when you quench it properly. Okay, what we're gonna do is explain, like I said, the difference today between just burning a piece of oil on, on a bolt and actually quenching it to change the molecular structure. There's lots of videos on the net about blacksmithing bladesmithing, making swords, blades, axes, that sort of thing. It's fascinating, the Damascus steel, that sort of thing, folding metal, absolutely real. I love that stuff, I love it to bits, but it's often not explained. You don't really know what's happening or going on. Now, I'm not gonna make this a boring video about, is it Open University? <laughs> Got a big woolly beard talking about science. It's not interesting. What's interesting is very quickly knowing what's happening. So quite simply, the piece of metal has a molecular structure, and when you heat it up, to a given temperature, that structure changes. It relaxes right back, it expands. We know this because when you heat a piece of metal, you can bend it. If you heat it and let it cool down really, really slowly, and I mean really slowly, like over 24 hours, you make that piece of metal like putty. You can bend it around because when you heat it up, the molecules, they relax and separate away from each other and it all sits relaxed. When it cools down, they tend to snuck back up again and go back to this normal temperature. But if you let it cool down slowly, they, they forget to come back together and they stay relaxed. That's called annealing. That's how you soften a piece of metal so you can bend it around and manipulate it. And the best example of that, I've got some wire here. Take this regular piece of wire. You can see that it doesn't, that's, that's its given strength. This piece has been heated up and annealed. And I can literally... You could knit with that. I am not, no. <laughs> I can literally tie a knot in it because it's been annealed. So when you heat up this piece of metal and let it cool down really slowly, like over about an hour, so by leaving it on a source of heat and reducing that heat, that's what happens. When guys want to make a knife or a sword out of a file, so you take a file like this, that steel is extremely hard. We know this because it cuts into other metal. So what they do is they'll stick that in a furnace, heat it right up to yellow heat. Then what I've seen done quite often is they'll poke that into the embers of a fire. Then they'll cover up the fire with earth and leave it overnight. And that'll cool down so slowly, the next day that, that file is as soft as lead. You can just fold it. And that's how they then work it into a knife and it's sharpened and make it where they need to be. But then there's the next thing they need to do. They can't use that as a knife when it's all soft. They have to re-harden it. So today I wanted to cover about what happens to make the metal go hard. How do you go from annealed metal, which is putty soft, back to rock hard so it's resilient and durable and can be used as a knife or a tool. That's really, really important. So that's the simple skills today. Now all it is, is quite simply doing the opposite of annealing. So when you anneal something, you allow the molecules to stay separated. But if you get it hot, all the molecules have separated, then suddenly you shock it. That's the point. You stick it in a cold liquid, and all the molecules get suddenly shocked, bang, and they quickly snuck back up really, really tight, and that metal becomes denser than it was before, so harder than it was normally. So you're hardening the metal, you're tempering it, and that's very much how you do it. Now, if you do it in water, the likelihood is that the shock is such 
that it will crack the metal. You go make a beautiful blade or a knife, you quench it in water and it can crack the metal. You can actually dip it in, you can hear it, dang, 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 crack, 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 and you've ruined the thing and it's scrap, literally scrap metal. But you quench it in oil. Now go back to some of the samurai sword videos. You see those being made. These are, these are TV shows back in the 70s and they've been made into YouTube videos. And you watch these guys making samurai swords and they're using oil to quench the blades. So I wanna do that today. Very simple. If you're gonna use oil to quench something, you need something a little bit more than just a plastic beaker like I used for the bowl because that's gonna vaporize. This oil is gonna go from room temperature to about four or 500 degrees in a second. It's gonna vaporize, so you need something really thick. And what I've used, I've got an old gas cylinder that was definitely empty. I tested that first, and then I cut it in half. Now that's gonna make a nice cylinder for longer blades. It's very thick, it's three mil thick steel, a proper pressure cylinder. So that is a perfect receptacle to put the oil in for quenching. And being as it's really heavyweight steel, like that, I'm only going to use a small piece of metal for demonstration today. I'm going to put that in the vise like that. Tighten it in, it's nice and stiff. And there we are, I've got a nice safe container. I'm going to use some old fork oil that I've had for years. Just going to tip that in as the oil for quenching. So we're going to heat this little piece of metal up, we're going to burn it or quench it in this oil. There we go. Yeah, checking the valve still sealed. And now I'm going to take this piece of steel. Now I've prepared this for heating. I didn't want to put the piece of metal straight in the jaws of the vice grips because these are stone cold. And as I heat the metal, the heat from the metal is going to get drawn out of it and into the pliers. So it's going to struggle to get up to temperature instead. I'm going to heat it on the end of this hook. I'll squeeze that in too tight so it won't come off. I'm not going to drop a piece of red hot metal on the floor and it's all nice and neatly contained so that will heat up quicker. So let's get the gas on. Start heating up. I was told so many stories and I kept them in my stomach. Lies the truth, fake smiles of blood money. A lost cause at a loss for words. Trying to keep my tone down when I'm saying it's absurd. Unusual, the context unique Buried in the depths of metaphorical speech A hidden message Pull the infinite strings Reconnect the ends and pretend to justify the means Parallel, we're reading the same page Turn days in the literature Simple as loose change, it was perfect Or at least that's what I'm told Courage is dead, spending my life fearing the cold I was useless Feeling like dead weight, plain as day and it do so when handshakes Originality was spread across the board Intricate self-worth, I'm searching for more Right It's all going nicely now Let it cool down There it is, now Obviously the test There's a piece of like-minded metal Like-minded <laughs> A piece of like metal That's exactly what That was the piece we riveted together the other day So that just gives us like for like That's what I'm getting at So the way to test to see if you've made it successfully hard is to take a file, take the, the soft original piece and give it a little file and you'll feel it. You can't really hear it, you can't really see it such, but when you file against it, you can feel the file taking metal off. It's kind of got a resistance, it drags. Take the piece that you've hardened and it skids over the top. It, it doesn't want to, it is putting a little bit of a mark in it, but it's not by any means cutting the metal away that that one is. So we have managed to hold that. Now, how do I manage to get that to a white hot, you know, about 1300 degrees, then quenched it? It would have gone a lot harder. It's all about temperature, but I'm using a propane torch because this is a domestic environment. I don't want oxyacetylene in the garage. It's just the big, massive pressure bottles. For me, I, I, that doesn't work here, so I have to have those. But how do I manage to get that hot or in a forge? then I'd have got that up to enough temperature to properly temper it. So if it's a blade, you're making something like that, it won't crack if you use oil. Now, where might we use this? Where might you use this on your bike and in your garage, in your life? Well, imagine, if you will, a worn out screwdriver. I think we did this before, you know, you can repair your old tools. I just want to cover it again, because it really truly is a way to save money. Um, 
Some of us have got tools we've had for many, many years and we want to keep. You know, you might have had a tool or a screwdriver given to you by a grandparent or something and you don't just want to chuck it away. You want to repair it and you can do it. So I'll show you this. Have a quick look at that pen. Mm. This is a really old screwdriver I've had for a long time and the state of that tip. That's only because it is just an old screwdriver. It's got no sentimental value, but I, it's a big handy thing. I use it as a pry bar and as a chisel and all sorts because it's days as a screwdriver are long gone. But look, it's not the end of the world. Let me show you what I mean. I'll put a bit of a shape to that and I'll show you how tempering it like this will make it work as a screwdriver again. We can rescue this, I'll show you. cooking as it goes in and that will harden the tip of the screwdriver and make it usable again okay so there we are that's as simple as that if you want to repair an old tool that's a way to do it um, it's just simply following the last video that we did on oil burning which is about four or five hundred degrees this is quenching from red hot to stone cold in oil and that will make the metal hard and durable and resilient and there we are repair the screwdriver you don't have to obviously the process will make it black because the oil will burn in but you can buff that out and you can make it shiny again just with a scotch bright, get it back up. Oops, it's been a bit hot. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's I've done that to this screwdriver a dozen times. And it, because I abuse it really, I mean you shouldn't abuse your tools, but if you do then there's a way to repair them. And that's it. What do you want pen? Great. Okay, have loads of fun with this. Have a look on the net at the videos. Actually look at that, that's nice now. There we are. Nicely re repaired, back to normal. I can use that again, nice and sharp. And of course, this is important because, okay, if you can't afford a new screwdriver, if you can do that to it, it won't mince screws. There's only flat heads that you can do this to. You can't do it to cross heads. Obviously, that's a little different, different process. They're ground and so on. But if you're gonna do this, then a nice straight screwdriver won't mince up the screws. There's another point. Um, like I said, have some fun with this. Go on and look at other videos on blacksmithing, blade making, bladesmithing. I absolutely love that stuff. It's really fascinating. There's a lot to be learned from it, all along the lines of simple skills, basic metalworking skills, because they are the fabric of life. It's great. I mean, us motorcycle riders, we love to modify our bikes. We love to make them into our own interpretation of what we want to ride. And we buy accessories, and very often these accessories don't fit. So the ability to work a piece of metal, to make a little bracket so that something bolts on, that is something, that is a skill that will open up a world of fun and games you can have with your bike. And it really, really isn't hard. Penny does it, don't you? Yeah. Now and again. Mm -hmm. There we are. Okay, anything else, Penny? That's it, thank you. There we are. Take easy ride safe. Thanks for watching. See you at the weekend. I swear rain doesn't fall on my fields It takes a drought to avoid all the secrets that I concealed Hidden within the dust covered land behind the city The street lights are dim and the fog is always walking with me It's nothing new, my eyes adjusted to the scene Flickering on and off, it's just the daily routine I grab a hold of time, forcing not to leave The weeds grow sporadic in my home is where I'm quarantined Thinking less, move the top to where the fuel rests Giving all I got to breathe life to the common sense Moving the top to where the fuel rests Giving all I got to breathe life to your silhouette Question is, do we take a deflect? It seems heavy But when I roll my hands with steady The whites of his eyes seen from the paper till I was ready Frustration became more common than being calm and outcast Walked in the motion of every song till it fades I washed away the shades of color Peeled back the winter bringing light to my summer I spent the longest time trying